Hello everyone and welcome to Quality Old Games. Today we are making a short guide to the Eastern Roman Empire. And as you can see the starting situation there is quite decent, at least financially. So the empire is making rather hefty profits at the moment. And it controls the richer end, the Eastern Mediterranean. So some very huge cities and uh, for example building ports in some of these settlements will bring quite decent additional profits or perhaps upgrading the ports or building one for example in Salamis will bring about 750 denarii per turn so that's quite nice investment it will pay itself back about in one turn but um, the Byzantine Empire is not without its challenges. Uh, the most obvious one are the barbarian hordes. So there are Vandals and then there are the Huns and soon there will be Sarmatians likely and the Goths as well. So you need to defend the European side of the northern border. Fortunately you have basically three bridges with which you can do it. Uh, unfortunately, maintaining three proper armies, uh, one to guard each of these bridges, I think is quite difficult. But you can uh, buy yourself time by building a fort, not right next to the bridge, but a bit farther away, so it will block a quick entrance to the bridge, so the enemy has to besiege it in order to go through it and you will have enough time to move a proper army to defend the bridge there. Or in here, this would be the fort location or here uh, in case the bridge near Sermium. So this border here will be uh, quite difficult to hold because those barbarian hordes will have uh, several full stack armies and you cannot spare uh, but perhaps two full armies here. And then you have to rely on mercenaries and you, can, you can't likely have the ideal composition for uh, bridge battles. And reinforcing those armies will be quite difficult. So if you are uh, about to get a poor fight, you may want to pull back instead of fighting it on the bridge. Because the AI of the hordes might decide that they don't want to enter your mainland but will continue somewhere else after gaining a foothold in the bridge. That at least have been, happened for me. Um, then you have in the west your ally, Western Roman Empire. And um, well, I think the most interesting fact about your ally is that it has very many large or huge cities. And of course, large and huge cities mean quite a lot of plunder, if you manage to capture them. And likely here in southern Italy, and of course here in southern France and Spain, the garrisons throughout the game will be quite weak. So, at least at some point, you want to move against Western Roman Empire, especially to gain that loot and of course to gain territory and you need to control Rome in order to achieve victory and Carthage as well. But uh, they shouldn't be too difficult to take. If you take one uh, decent enough army to southern Italy or push from Kyrene with mercenary army toward Lepsis Manga and towards Carthage, I think you will be able to take all of this area here quite fast. Of course, the question is, when do you want to break that alliance? Do you want to concentrate on defending the border here or do you want to gain some territory? I would recommend moving against the Western Roman Empire sooner rather than later because it will increase your finances and actually make the defense of this northern border here quite a bit easier. Then in the east, you have the Sassanid Empire. And uh, they are quite a bit smaller than you, but they have, for example, Klibinari Immortals, which alone 
in very hard difficulty can decimate almost full army if uh, you attacked with tired units or they just can jump on your critical army and can cause some panic and then that spread and so on. So in order to deal those Klippinari Immortals I would recommend using for example superior numbers or then eastern archers which are really good uh, missile unit in my opinion. Uh, they have long range missiles which is really good and their missile attack value of 9 is really nice. So with these guys, several of these guys, I think you should be able to pepper down those Klippinari Immortals if you have something to hold the front against them so those archers can say, stay safe. You have some uh, easy settlements to capture, for example Petra. It shouldn't cause too much uh, unrest problems either. Uh, Dumatha might be a, a bit more difficult and I think Sassanids will capture them, it, but Kotais also should be uh, rather easy to conquer, for example with this army, especially if you reinforce it with some units, for example from Sinopi, for example with this, this Hippotoxotai. And uh, you want to keep Sassanids in check here, uh, because all of these cities are very rich. They bring a lot of trade income and if they become besieged you will lose thousands per turn even for one city. So you want to keep these cities uh, free of sieges and take the battle to the Sassanids. And of course since they have not too large territory uh, once you manage to smash through their frontal lines you should be able to rather easily capture these cities lying in the uh, back of their area. And you are already at war with them, so you most definitely want to have some uh, decent enough armies in this area here. Uh, as you can see, there are some troubles with public order in your empire, and you should in the beginning of the game, check what's causing it. So, for example, we have Philadelphia here, which has really low public order. There is a shrine to Sol Invictus there, but the population is mostly Christian. So, you should get rid of that shrine, and voila, you have just improved the public order by, what, 60%. There might be other cities which have similar situation. For example here, Sinope is a Christian settlement. So you want to get rid of that temple and you increase the public order by 40% right away. So check every settlement about their religious situation and you can improve the public order quite fast if you just choose the uh, religion that the population supports. Uh, even though you have at the beginning of the game rather nice financial situation, training troops to keep some of the borders here and of course making armies against the Sassanids and Western Roman Empire and against something else as well will severely begin to tax your financial situation. So, um, you want to get rid of all of your useless assets. For example, you have some uh, uh, fleets that are too big, or you have some fleets that you don't need to at all. So, you might want to disband them. And for example, disbanding this fleet altogether will increase your income by 400 denarii per turn. I don't think you need to have these fleets, or at least all of these fleets. Maybe you want to block this straight here, Bosporan straight here, with some fleet, but for example, this fleet can be disbanded, this fleet can be disbanded, maybe one ship from that fleet can be disbanded. And you also need to check your garrisons, 
For example, in Kaidonia, it's very unlikely that anyone will threaten this city. So, get rid of this Legio Lanciari, get little, rid of those Limitane, or then bring them to the front where they matter. Also, I don't think Athens and Thessalonica will come under attack anytime soon, so uh, move the fighting forces to front and replace them with, for example, peasants. Then about building uh, units, uh, you should uh, focus one city for building something. For example, you have stables in Thessalonica and Athens, you should choose one of these cities to focus on cavalry units and then improve the stables there. And for example, Constantinople, if you want that to focus on archery units or infantry units, you should just build those, uh, those unit production facilities there. Because your financial situation will be such that you cannot build anything, everything you want. So uh, be a bit picky. For example, these three cities here, or maybe including Sermium. You should have uh, one city building infantry, one city building cavalry, one city building artillery units. And in my experience, usually these eastern archers uh, are the kind of the uh, maximum requisite units for from artillery buildings. So upgrading this to tier 2 uh, in my opinion, is often enough. Of course, for infantry, at least I would like to have uh, Plumbatari and uh, Komitatensi's first cohort, so I at least would upgrade the infantry barracks quite far. And of course, here the advanced tables can give you those uh, Equites uh, Glibinari and Equites Catafracti that are kind of the equivalent of modern tanks in this area here. And of course Hippotoxotai are really nice as well. So basically here you will need to have uh, quite decent stables. So as you can see with Hippodrome you can only get Hippotoxotai and Equites Auxilia, but when you build the uh, Circus Maximus, you can get the full range of cavalry units. Of course, keep in mind, it's very, very expensive. Then you are having currency crisis here. So, um, I was actually quite surprised how much money merchants can bring. And um, you can resolve this currency crisis by building improved mines. So first you have to build mines and then you have to build improved mines. And some settlements just are better or provide more income from mines than others. For example here you get 400 and the kind of nominal amount per turn is 200. So both of these cities are rather good building places for mines. But for example, Salona is exceptionally good. I guess basic mines will get some 700 per turn or something like that. So you, you might want to check out where to build those mines. But build them you should, because when you have resolved the currency crisis, you can... Uh, acquire merchants or build merchants and they can provide some let's say from 200 to say 700 plus denarii per turn per merchant so that will be quite an increase to your income and about armies i recommend that um, you utilize mercenaries because their upkeep is not that much higher than those of the regular soldiers you can recruit. So especially if you are on the offensive uh, and want to keep the momentum going, I think mercenaries are a really good choice. And especially in some areas, for example, if you want to push westward from Kyrene and cannot recruit any good troops there, you might 
just want to recruit mercenaries along the way if you are char uh, attacking Lepsis manga. Uh, in my playthrough, I didn't deem it wise to kind of force one religion for the whole empire. So um, I had some pagan settlements and some Christian settlements and then some Zoroastrian settlements here, which I conquered. And I didn't see any too much troubles from that kind of approach. So I think it worked worked rather well. And with the uh, Eastern Roman Empire, it's quite easy to keep your settlements in check. I didn't have uh, even one settlement to rebel uh, in my campaign playthrough in very hard difficulties. So you should be able to keep them under control. The main issue is securing this northern border. You should not ignore it and other difficulty is the Sassanid Empire. You should really try to uh, gain the initiative against them as soon as possible. So, this is my quick guide for the Eastern Roman Empire. What do you think? Did I miss something? Uh, do you disagree with something? Please feel free to share your comments or your thoughts in the comments field below. And if you like the content, please leave a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification so you will be informed whenever a new video is released. Have a great rest of the day. Quality Old Games, out.